Hello and welcome everybody to Fish's RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd and behind us, not the biggest RV that's ever been featured on this channel, this is the Ember Rock, which is a sister to the Ember Roll. They are the exact same camper. The only difference is that uh, the Rock stands for Rear Outside Kitchen and the Roll is a Rear Outside Locker. In English, it's just pure storage of effectively in the, uh, the rear cavity, as it were. Um, What's interesting about this one, despite the fact that these are the smallest of the embers, they actually boast some of the better um, cargo capacities of the embers that you've seen out there. This one comes in, I think it was 1,211 pounds cargo or something like that, which if you convert to kilograms um, is a different number. <laughs> and uh, This is kind of um, their take on the idea of a box drop. You know, there were teardrop campers for a long time, they're small, it's a little bed inside of a door. There's not a whole lot going on inside of it. Um, it's, you know, you're going to spend most of your time outside. That's kind of what this thing is right here. It's definitely made, I think, for that more active lifestyle RVer and individual. Um, it wouldn't be a good fit for old Uncle Josh here because it don't have a nice recliner across from a theater seat and a footsie fryer. But um, that's, that's my life. That's not your life, potentially. This thing has a uh, 190 watt factory roof solar, which is hard to find on these little box drops. Uh, standard kayak mounts that you got the Thule roof rack on this thing. That's how that Thule thing is pronounced. Thule, by the way, it's some kind of Scandinavian pronunciation, I'm sure. Um, there's a roof mounted uh, like tent system you can get on this. This is not your average everyday camper. It's also not the lightest weight of these little things I've seen, but as seems to be the case with any of the embers, this is like a rugged generational build. This is something where if you go camping with the kids and you put them in the tent on the roof, eventually one day you'll be able to hand this thing to your kids and they can put their kids on the roof. Of course, by that point, we'll probably have achieved the technology for the hovering anti-gravity pads and we won't need wheels anymore. As Doc Brown would say, roads where we're going, we don't need roads. All right, so these things are a little bit different breed. I actually kind of want to start outside to help you get a lay of the land. First of all, notice it does have a screen door. It's a nice and wide door, and it does have the privacy shade in the door, all of which are nice. We're going to talk more about privacy shades as we go here. Um, when you're in a little space like this, there's not a whole lot you can always do. Um, I think they got as creative as they could with the space that they had allowed. So I'm going to have to kind of break this up a little bit. Uh, I also don't want to make you, you know, seasick while I do it. So allow me to climb in here, which for you is going to look like just a flash. So one of the first things I always like to showcase in these is that it, at my size, I'm a 6'3-ish kind of dude with my boots on here. There's not a ton of headroom in here, but there's enough where if it's the end of the night, early morning, if it's raining, if I'm stuck inside, if I'm between things or something like that, I do have a space where a couple adults could sit in here and allow me to kind of turn this uh, a little bit slow for you so as to not make you motion sick. There's plenty of room over here. You could have, I think that this sofa is long enough. You could have two adults and a kid. Or one of the things here is that the adult, uh, the adult is also the bed. That's just me hitting my head on the laminated wall, which is solid as a rock, by the way. Um, the sofa is also the bed, which leads to the big question. Can you actually fit on this thing? And I don't want to put my boots on here. So I'm gonna freeze my feet for you. Hope you appreciate it. Okay, cold feet, here we go. Now, to get the shot that we're doing here, I have to do something I personally absolutely despise. I had to put this thing in super wide angle bubble camera, liar, liar, pants on fire mode. I don't like it because it makes you think the camper is bigger than it really is and I don't like misleading people like that. But it's the only way in this small space, I think you can see front to back. Anyway, sorry, enough apologizing, enough explaining. I'm, again, a pretty tall guy. If I lay down, my feet are not touching the wall. You see my cheap Walmart socks down there? Now, this is not extremely wide. The way that I like to describe it is that if you live in certain third world countries, if two people slept on this thing overnight, in the morning you'd be legally married. Now, normally, in these box drops, that's the side I kind of consider the headboard. But... I don't know what it is about this. Just the way this one lays out, probably because there's that big front window here, there's a window here. This 
feels like the headboard to me. And I want to be like, if I hear something, I want to be able to sit up. I can look out this window. I can look out the front window. I can look out the window and the door, depending on how you have the shades all set. Um, and, uh, you know, I can be, I can, I can have some security. Now, speaking of windows, as long as we're right here, these are dual pane Euro style windows. One of the kind of cool things about these is that they have dual shades. You've got a day shade from the bottom, which basically acts as the bug screen when the window's open because there's no other screen here normally. But that will give you airflow. That will keep the uh, the little flying critters out. And then if you want pull-on privacy, you got that sucker you can pull down. Or, depending on what you're looking for, you can kind of half and half it a little bit. Or you can do a little one, two, three. I don't know. You get the idea. You can do whatever you want with these. The other thing with these windows, I'm not saying they're like, I dislike the, the, the misconception of thermal pane windows in RVs because that's not usually what these things are. They're dual pane. They are better than a standard window, but where they're awesome is they're incredibly noise deadening. So when I'm not constantly talking in here, it is very pleasant and quiet. So if you're the type of person that doesn't always sleep well when you're hearing the crickets and the, and the, uh, the owls at night, you're going to like what you get out of these windows here. Oh, chilly feet. So real quick here, just to get it out of bubble camera mode, to, uh, you know, when you're at the door, this is a little more realistic uh, scope and scale of what this looks like when it's down in bed mode. So flipping back around from the sofa position to give you a frame of reference, looking at our door again, that privacy shade, the screen door, really welcome features in here. I point those out because not every little camper like this has those things. Storage in a small trailer is always tricky. There's just not a whole lot of space. I would personally, I don't know, cargo netting, bungee cord, something to keep stuff in that upper pocket right there. Maybe you only use that when you get to your destination. I don't know. And maybe you do want to use this as the headboard and not the footboard, considering you've got your pop-up power tower right there with some USB plugs. But also, you see this padded section here. That has a little Legend of Zelda secret storage in it with its own set of USB plugs in there as well for a potential charging station. Now, as long as we're talking about storage, I want to look at uh, one more thing right here real quick. And if we, uh, you see this cabinet by the door, again, it's not massive. And in a little camper, it's probably going to end up as a combination of like, say, food, dry storage, clothing. Like it's going to, it's going to be kind of a catch-all, but that's sort of what you have to do in little campers like this. There's one more chunk of storage inside the camper though. Well, kind of inside, kind of outside. Uh, there's actually a pass-through from inside to outside here under the sofa. So it, it really depends on how you want to use that, the way that you might utilize it. Um, it's interesting though, it actually just has these uh, aggressive magnets to hold the face on there. So you don't have to worry about like a baggage door flopping down overnight and like scaring you to death. Now, <clears throat> you see the little black plug right there to the right of the converter box. That is the heat outlet for the Truma Combi unit. This has a combination water heater and furnace, which is brilliant in little campers like this, I think. You may also notice how this has fairly minimal lighting. I've only got two lights on in the RV currently. That is kind of by intention though, so you don't accidentally uh, go around just soaking up all of your battery power. They make, they make basically force you to be conservative with your lighting when you're off grid. Now, finally up here, standard up top, we've got the big XL vent fan. This also has that 190 watt roof solar panel standard. You'll see your charge controller located uh, up here where it's easy to see, but it's out of the way. The Truma Combi control panel right below that. And then we have light switches for inside and outside. But the inside lights are also on a dimmer, which is kind of over the top, but also kind of cool. Now the air conditioner in the rock and roll embers is actually optional which is kind of interesting because again there are some people like i'm i'm going to use this to get off the grid i don't want uh, a big powerful air conditioner one of the cool things with these though is that if you don't want the ac it basically includes a little kit where you can pop that out swap it out and effectively put like a little screen cover uh over what would be the you know exterior hole in the wall as it were so you know, depending on what you're doing with it, you could pop that out or put it back in, whatever works for you. I know some people that do stuff like that. Also, we have this really cool, very functional, flexible use lagoon table over here. Check this thing out. So once again, anytime we're in a small space, we need one thing to do multiple things. 
What is nice is you can have it here uh, against the wall, out of the way. If you want to set the sofa down, you can do that. You don't have to like take it on and off. Although this table does pop on and off very easily, but um, it can kind of swing over to you. You can have it sort of, you know, like in, in desk mode, you can have it sort of off to the side so it's not blocking the door. Um, it, it, you can kind of do a little bit of whatever you want with it. I think the reason we don't see more true lagoon tables in the RV industry though, is that they're expensive as compared to like, you ever see the ones that have just a big metal post that just sort of slots in place on the front of a dinette or something like that. Those are way less expensive by comparison. Um, they're nice because they're sturdy and they're, uh, you know, they can be rigid or whatever, but, uh, you know, your table doesn't fly around if you bump into it. But the fact is, this, to me, makes way more sense in this little camper because it, it's just, I grab it, I do what I need to do, I push it away, it's out of the way. For me, it works. And it's another reason why I think this is a good headboard. I know I keep flip-flopping on this. I think this is good headboard for the bed because you have household plugs there. You've got, um, like, a, we used to call them cigarette lighters growing up. What? I don't know. Is that just called a 12-volt power point now? But... You can take your phone, like your, your car USB phone charger, plug it in up here. Uh, you could have stuff plugged in over here, assuming you have park power available. Um, you know, there's there's just not much you can't do in this little space. Although, I wouldn't recommend um, going to the bathroom in here unless you maybe bring a porta potty and leave it under there. <laughs> All right, so right up front here, we've got that dual pane window giving us uh, you know, cool forward view, and it does make that little space look bigger. Um, these are also a little bit bigger, a little bit beefier than most of the uh, box drops, as they've come to be called. Like, um, Rockwood was one of the first to kind of start doing a teardrop style in more of a boxy shape. Although, interestingly, Rockwood has canceled or retired, as whatever you want to say, their um, 12 series Geo Pros, the 12RK, the 12SRK. Um, they're just simply no longer around anymore. Jay Feather's still making their 12 SRK. Here's Ember doing their take on it. They both do, well, they all do a couple different things. So first of all, anywhere that you're seeing like the metal skeleton or the cargo box up front, that is a uh, powder coated aluminum. So it's lightweight, but very strong, very rugged. Also under every seal point on this, every corner joint or whatever, you're going to, uh, well, if you peeled it, you're not going to see it sitting here, is a turnabon tape. Um, that stuff, once you put it down, you're there till death do us part. It doesn't have a butyl tape sealant underneath that can rot out over time. That's a big deal feature. Notice how we've got the triple entry step, maybe overkill on this camper, but it kind of needs to be there because of that taller suspension package and those Goodyear Wranglers lifting it off the ground so much, they wanted to make sure you could step in and out of that. Now, obviously, it's a little hobbit home and you're ducking into it. Gandalf the wizard would be bonking his head all over the place, but neither here nor there. Um, the uh, uh, lock set on this, even though there's not a lot of exterior doors or anything, it's one key operates the whole camper. Now let's look up real quick. Um, you've got that, uh, you, you can see from here, the kayak rack. I believe that's the standard configuration on these. But the Thule roof rack on this thing, uh, there's an option for like a roof mounted um, tent with a little ladder to take you up there. Also upstairs, uh, we've got that 190 watt roof solar package, which is, I believe, the most you can put on this because this is uh, one of the only embers where max solar uh, is not a possibility. Now, uh, the Goodyear Wranglers over here, it's actually a truck tire, that has uh, a, what, 87 mile an hour rating, but also factory TPMS included on these for a little bit of peace of mind. Now, I don't exactly have it set properly, so if you're looking at this closely, you're like, wait a minute, that's not how it works. You're correct, it's not. I'm just doing this for demonstrational purposes. The RV has its own built-in wheel chocks. Um, so that, you know, this little thing would be inclined to shift and wiggle, or, or as I like to call it, shiggle, all over a campsite, and I don't got to worry about it. You could also, while it's in storage, or when you're not hooked up to it, padlock that sucker so that other people can't go traipsing down the road with your fancy ember rock and roll, no sir. Now let's talk about that. Ember makes two things like this, the rock and the roll. R-O-K, R-O-L. When you look at them on paper, they look to be almost exactly the same because they effectively are. They're the same shell, the same camper. This 
area back here is all that changes. Right now, we're looking at the rock. Rear outside kitchen is roughly what that corresponds to versus the roll, which is rear outside locker. It's nothing but basically just storage outside and you can craft whatever you want with it. Some people are gonna think one is stupid. Some people think the other is stupid. So Ember said, fine, we'll do both. <laughs> now, um, there's a couple options available on these and I'm a little surprised we don't have it expressed on this one. You can have an outside griddle included with this one right here. Some people think the TV outside is cool. Some people think the TV outside is stupid. Um, I've never yet found a camper that works for every single person. I do think that there should be some kind of interior mount point for that thing, but at the same time, space is awful limited. Little neat note, all galvanized rolled steel, uh, you know, kind of, I, I don't, do we call it cabinetry if it has no door? You get the idea. Storage shelving, plus the little pegboard stuff. I love that stuff. I love that stuff so much, the, the things that it lets you do. Now, you also notice how uh, there's that like chest fridge freezer in there. Well, if we take a little bit of a look here, one of the other cool things about this is that is totally portable. It is 110 or 12 volt powered. So uh, if you wanna like drag it around with you for a little bit, you know, it's got its own little, uh, I, I believe onboard battery station, uh, or at least that's just the heavy compressor that I'm picking up and lugging around sometimes here. Um, it uh, doesn't have to stay in there. So like, let's say you're having your kid's birthday party and family's coming over and uh, you want to you put out the the drinks or something like that. You could take that out of the camper. You could put it on your deck and you could use it elsewhere, which I think is actually pretty cool. Now, what is also cool is once again, it's small, but it has all of the build, all of the equipment of a bigger ember like this one right over there. That looks to be a 191 MDB Murphy bed double bunk. Um, but, you know, all the different shapes and sizes, they're built the same. So the roof and the walls, including the front and rear walls, not just the side walls, uh, completely woodless. They are Asdell inside and outside layering, uh, aluminum framed, laminated, block foam insulated. The floor, the only difference there is instead of block foam insulation, the floor basically is composed of an ex extra thick composite material, which is going to act like a nice thermal barrier, not to mention it's stronger than plywood. Um, so that's totally different. You've got the two inch receiver hitch on the back here, allowing this little thing to bring along some bikes or a portable generator, whatever you wanna do. And since this does come off the back side of the RV, we all know that when the gas comes out the back side, she is called a pro penis. <laughs> now, one of the things that is, uh, op that is optional that has been included on this RV is the Truma Combi water heater furnace combo, which is a brilliant, I think, decision to include on a small camper like this. You can actually see the exhaust of it out here. Um, these wheel wells, by the way, they are fully walkable. And that is one of the reasons there's a little handhold up here. You can step on the, the, the fender flares, as it were, and get yourself up so you can get up there to load your kayaks, your bikes, your, your tent, or whatever else it might be while you're in there. Now, um, if we get down below, the entire underbelly is not enclosed, but the area where any sort of tanks or anything would be. This is also probably the best look we're going to uh, be able to get at that true off-road trailing arm suspension system. And it is, it is legit. Also, because of this, because of how beefy and strong it is, they had to build this with a more heavy duty box tube steel frame. They call it their trailblazer chassis. This is not built on a traditional I-beam chassis. It could not handle that suspension. And it's not much, but we do have some level of pass-through storage out here that actually uh, is accessible from inside under the uh, sofa. And again, it's not real big, but I don't know what more you really need out of it. Battery disconnect, inverter remote switch here also um, one thing, I, I tell you what, Ember, I don't like this. Um, folks, if you agree, chime in in the comments. You see where that portable solar prep plug is? That should not be inside this baggage door because you have to open the baggage door. It needs to be anywhere else outside, just not right there. Put it on the nose of the trailer, I don't care. Then the final box, by the way, I hope you appreciate the fact that I'm willing to point out where I think RVs make mistakes too. Um, that right there, the bottom left-hand corner, that is our uh, where your TPMS module inserts. Now, um, something that's pretty wild is this has the same turn signal safety lighting and reverse travel lighting safety package 
of like a big ember or like a uh, like a pinnacle luxury fifth wheel. You're getting that same kind of thing going on here. Now, um, up front, let's take a quick look at the gearbox. On the, uh, well, as we're facing the nose, uh, the right-hand side is just open space if you want to add batteries. The left-hand side is uh, your propane tanks, and that's another really cool thing. This trailer comes with double propane tanks instead of singles. It's a bunch of little stuff like that chassis, uh, the, the thicker floor, a bunch of stuff like that adds up. Why This is not the, the, the lightest weight little ember you've ever seen, um, or, well, or little box drop you've ever seen, as it were. But again, thickest, beefiest, uh, potentially longest lasting, holy cow. By the way, one of the handy little pro tips, cause like I've told you, I don't camp in little campers like this myself. I like to have full park hookups. This isn't my style, but I respect the type of camper it is. So I reached out to a couple friends, like my friend, uh, Mr. Pat Bremer. Uh, he has his own little blog, The Small Trailer Enthusiast, and he's had little teardrops like this. And one of the questions I had for him is like, okay, you got that outside kitchen door when it's open, like, what do you do when it's raining? He says, it's really easy. Go to like Walmart or whatever store you please, Amazon, I don't care. We probably have them in our parts and service center. The boss would probably prefer if I plug that instead of some other retailer, but neither here nor there. The fact is you can get this stuff on Amazon. It's not a secret. They kind of have everything. But get like a 10 by 10 easy up screen room. Put it over that rear camp kitchen door. And there you go. On a rainy day, you've got the side awning. You've got the uh, your 10 by 10 easy up screen room camp kitchen awning or whatever on the back or locker awning as it were and you know you don't have to go stir crazy just sitting inside all day so if you appreciate a little tip like that make sure you check out mr pat bremer small trailer enthusiast i will try to remember to put a link to that in the video description as a courtesy if i forget sorry about that and i hope you appreciate the fact that we're even willing to direct you to other places just doing anything that we can for you um i don't know just because it's the right thing to do you know so what do you think, guys? Like I said, not for everybody, but she's cute as a prom date, right? That thing, that's a cute camper. Not for everybody, probably wouldn't work for me. There is no way my wife would spend a weekend in one of those things with me. I would, can you imagine? Uh, sometimes I can get on my wife's nerves. Hard to believe I know. So uh, when we go camping, we like something a little more space, maybe a little bit bigger patio awning. She likes her noise canceling earbuds, tries to tune me out. Funny, I can't blame her. I can't blame her. Um, you people deal with me in larger doses than I could deal with me, and I thank you for it. Uh, if you appreciate the information we brought here for you today, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like our video. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy amp Ember. I couldn't, couldn't decide how I wanted to say this. So what came out of my mouth was... Dee!